Hi, my name is Tendai and welcome to my channel. Um, today I wanted to share with you uh, what I eat. I know I've been um, sharing with you what I eat over the last year or so. Um, and basically I thought I'd just go over some of the things I eat in detail um, and why I eat those things. Now, since getting back into cycling, I've, I've realized that on some of my outings, I'll burn as much as 7,000, sometimes sometimes more than 10,000 calories in one bike ride. Um, so I need to eat foods that will replenish that energy that I'm burning and make sure that next time I go out on a bike, I've got loads of energy and I can cycle throughout the day and not crash uh, or run out of energy, basically. So one of the things that I try and do is eat good organic carbs, um, things like uh, quinoa is one of my favorites simply because it is high in protein. The, one of the most complete proteins you're ever gonna get on this planet. Now, um, I like to get it in different forms. So this is quinoa pops, and then this is normal quinoa next to it. And then I've got organic flakes. Um, I don't have any organic flakes, I run out of organic flakes, and Planet Organic did not have any quinoa flakes. So, uh, that's quinoa. Spelt. Now, if I'm going to have pasta, this is the pasta I'm going to have. It'll be spelt pasta um, or green pea pasta or I'll have chickpea pasta. So, yeah, these are the type of pastas that I will have. Um, the reason why I go for spelt is because um, it is one of the um, original grains. So, um, that's why I go for uh, spelt as an alkaline vegan. Um, these two, this is not uh, alkaline vegan, but this, I suppose the way that it's made doesn't really make it alkaline vegan. But if I'm gonna have pasta, then I'll have the organic chicken fused. And the other thing I will do is if I'm making flatbreads or anything like that, or if I fancy a bit of bread, uh, I make my own flatbread sometimes. Uh, if I'm making pizza bases, I make my own pizza bases sometimes, and I'll use either spelt flour or chickpea flour. Um, and those are pretty good. Uh, one thing that I love is teff. Now, uh, I've got a few recipes for teff porridge. I'm actually making some right now because I fancy teff. Um, but high in iron, manganese, gluten-free for the celiacs out there. So I would highly recommend teff. Um, quinoa flakes, if you want porridge. Uh, quinoa flakes, if you want that, that OT type texture. Quinoa flakes are awesome for that. High in nutrition most complete protein you're ever going to get out of anything that I can think of right now. Better than meat. 100% better than meat. And another grain that I love is spelt. Now, I also use kamut grain um, and I've run out of kamut grain. I've run out of wild rice. I usually have wild rice, kamut grain, spelt grain. So those are like my three main grains, including quinoa four. Um, those are like my main grains that I tend to eat and I, I rotate those those four really um, and I get all my nutrients everything that I need out of those and here's another um, organic pearled spelt um, so if you're gonna um, have grains I highly recommend spelt however for the celiacs you can only have quinoa and teff and a few other things that I can't think of right now um, but this is what I tend to uh, populate my um, my meal planning with these are the items that I eat and when I'm on the bike uh, and I'm flying it's because I'm eating good healthy food packed with nutrients uh, me making sure that I don't crash at any point or run out of energy at any point throughout my bike ride so yeah this is it I thought I'd share it um, I hope this is helpful for some of you who are wondering what it is you should be eating. Uh, I'm going to post some of my numbers um, just to give you an idea, considering that I've only just got back into cycling again. My numbers are ridiculous. So, yeah, energy levels are high. Um, weight loss is massive. I've lost loads of weight. I'm pretty trim. So put good food in and you'll find out you get really good results. So... Um, if you're if you're exercising, it doesn't have to be cycling. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're if you're trying to um, get in shape, eat good food, packed full of nutrients, then I suggest all of this stuff here.
Cool. Good luck. On a typical day when I'm going out riding, I wake up, I have a litre of water by my bedside normally. Um, I do that every day. So every day when I wake up, I have a litre of water by my bedside, which I drink before I get out of bed. Uh, when I'm going out on a bike ride, I have a litre and a half, maybe more depending on the weather. So in the winter months, I'll only have like a litre and a half. But in the summer, I'll try and have at least two two litres of water before I actually jump on a bike and go out. I like riding in the mornings because then uh, there's less traffic and then, and then the day's yours. Um, you can get back earlier and, and do other things. However, uh, if I'm going out in the morning, uh, depending on how far I'm going, if I'm doing anything less than 40 miles, then I'll take quite a lot of dates with me. Um, sorry, over 40 miles, I'll take quite a lot of dates with me. But if I'm doing less than 40 miles, um, I tend not to take too much food. I'll probably take like a banana, uh, maybe a few dates um, on, that, on that shorter ride. And then I'll, I'll try and do it in, in as short a space of time as possible. Um, and then come back and, and have like a, like a smoothie or a juice, uh, maybe even porridge when I, when I get back. Uh, maybe some of my teff porridge, quinoa porridge, quinoa flakes. Uh, I love quinoa flakes. I love teff. I love a lot of the porridges that I've, I've been making. They're absolutely awesome in the winter months. But in the summer months, I tend to have more smoothies and juices and stuff like that because it's, it's a bit warmer so I can have the cold stuff. But in the winter, I prefer to have the porridge because um, it's, it's much better for you. Um, keeps you warm and helps to warm your body up. Um, so yeah, litre and a half of water. So Sunday when I went to Box Hill, I uh, had a litre of water, litre and a half of water. I took two 800 ml bottles of water with me on a bike. I took about 16 dates, pitted dates uh, with me as well for the ride. And I had some dried mango as well um, to eat because I didn't want to eat anything from like the, the coffee shop uh, box. I didn't want to buy food. I just wanted to have um, fruit or dates uh, with me to just to eat and then I had water so I was good. Um, the weather was absolutely awful. As you can see in the video, it is horrible. The, the, I'm sorry for the, for the quality of the uh, thing. The water splashing up off the, the front wheel and then going onto the camera. Um, no matter how many times I wiped it clean, within, within seconds it was, it was like that already. So I just kind of left it also. Plus I didn't really realize how dirty it was. Um, so here the numbers are decent. At this point, all I've had is, um, what time did we get to Box Hill? I think we've got to Box Hill run about midday. Um, and I hadn't, all I'd had up until this point was about eight dates and about a handful of dried mango and a load of water. So that's all I'd, I'd, I'd had up until this point. And I think when we got to Box Hill, we were around the 35 to 40 mile mark. Um, it was a shorter journey back home than it was going out. So yeah, I think we we're around about the, the 40, 40 plus mile mark at this point. Um, I wish I could see how much distance I've done in the video that would help. Um, however, in terms of nutrition, um, this, is, this is the most important thing. I necessarily don't do a lot of my eating on the day when I'm riding. I mean, I, I still eat, don't get me wrong, but in terms of like quantity, I don't really eat a lot when I'm on a bike. That's why I have dates because you can have um, enough energy out of um, a, a, a 10 gram date uh, to last you 20 minutes worth of um, hard exertion. Um, so that's why I prefer dates because I get a big punch out of one little date than I would if I was to sit down and eat a sandwich, which gives me nothing really, or a cake. Um, the, so the less, um, the less processed stuff you put in your system, the better your output, in my opinion, um, because you're eating healthy, clean, food which one ingredient foods so I'm, I'm a big advocate of one ingredient foods if it's processed and you don't know what's in it don't put it in your mouth if you look at it and you can't tell what it is you should not be eating it because it's no longer in its organic original form which means all the nutrients and the goodness has been taken out of it so it's not going to be good for you it's not going to give you the, the 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 energy or the nutrients it's not going to do for you what it's supposed to be doing like people that have um less sugar i'd rather have full fat sugar full sugar 
rather than the, the aspartames and whatever that cause cancer. So if you think by taking something that says zero, Coke zero or something, I, I mean, I don't drink Coke, I'm just giving you an example, Coke zero or zero fat, it means it's been modified. So it's no longer what you think it is. When you eat it, your body doesn't recognize it. So now you're thinking you're eating healthy, but you're not losing weight. And you're thinking, how come I'm not losing weight? I don't get this. I'm eating healthy. There's no fat. There's no sugar. That's your problem. There's no fat. There's no sugar. Your body doesn't recognize whatever it is that you're eating. And half the time when you eat that stuff, it's just stored as fat. Um, things like soya. <laughs> soya fucks with your hormones. Yeah. And it, it encourages the production of estrogen, which is why a lot of men have got moobs because there's estrogen in our water supply, in some of the foods that we eat, or there's loads of soya in everything that we eat. This young man here is awesome. I had to tell him that he was awesome because um, I, he, he's about the only other person that I saw going down and coming straight back up. So I had to say, yo, props for that. I tried to get the boys to come down with me and come back up, but they, they, weren't, they weren't listening. They didn't want to know. Um, one, of the, one of the man, them, G-Man, G-Man said to me, I'll come down with you, um, but then, <laughs> when I said let's go, it's like you know what, yeah, you, you go, bro, you go, I'm cool. <laughs> uh, cracks me up, but yeah, um, you get out of it what you put into it. Whether it's nutrition, whether it's your your training, whether it's how many how much how many hours or minutes you spend on your bike, whether it's on an indoor trainer, you get out of it what you put into it. So if you ride once or twice a week, you're only going to get once or twice a week's worth of benefit out of it. If you're eating include clean healthy once or twice a week you're only going to get once or twice a week out of it so don't expect to get great results when you're not actually putting in the work or the commitment to say i want to achieve this and i'm going to eat good i'm going to eat clean and i'm going to make sure that i hit those numbers um right now i'm working towards a kom i've got i've got a few koms from back in the day but that's back in the day and I still hold those KOMs for, for some of the locations. I think I've got four still that I still hold and nobody's come close to taking them off me, which which I'm pretty proud of. But I need to get some new ones because um, that was then, this is now. And I've, I, I lost quite a lot of other KOMs as well um, over the years because I've, I've taken quite a lot of time and a few people have taken some of my KOMs off me. So I really need to get some new KOMs. I'm in a new area now and I've been getting very close to a few of the KOMs and I'm telling you one of these days in January, I'm going to get one. What, my birthday's coming up actually. That'll be a nice little birthday present to get a KOM around here uh, in North Wheezy. Um, so yeah, coming back to nutrition. Um, things like pasta spikes your blood sugar levels. So those of you that suffer from diabetes, you shouldn't be eating things like pasta, normal pasta, because it spikes your blood sugar levels. Um, and if you've got diabetes and you want to be eating foods that are not processed you want to be drinking a lot of good clean filtered water or reverse osmosis water or you know um, i've got a, a show that i did with regards to the type of water we should all be drinking h3to water um, or if you if you've got a natural spring near you you need to be drinking that kind of water so one thing about water that's got structure it only keeps the structure for about three days so if you've got Water from a, from a well or from a spring, natural spring that you, you collect. Like I go to um, uh, Glastonbury sometimes and there's, there's two wells, the female and the male one. And I collect water from there. Now, it's still got the nutrients and everything in there, which is good, but it loses its structure from where it's flowing through the earth and it's got the, the magnetic pool from the earth and the moon and everything else giving it structure. After a few days, it loses that structure. So that water needs to be drank within three days. After that, you can use magnets to put the structure back in the water or give it structure again. So the type of water you should be drinking, the type of food you should be eating, and the amount of exercise you should be doing based on the amount of nutrition you're putting on board. So pasta, I'm not a huge fan of. Um, animal products, uh, as you already know, I don't do animal products. Um, herbs. Now, at the end of this, I'm gonna show you the, the tea that I drink almost on a daily basis uh, to get iron, manganese, blood cleanser, um, cleanses my, my kidneys, my liver, you know, uh, cleanses my gut. Um, it is awesome. Uh, burdock and sarsaparilla, you'll see it at the end. But uh, I drink that on a daily basis. There's another thing that I do on a daily basis as well, which is baobab powder. 
I have baobab powder and I, I just add water to it and I eat it with a spoon. It's like a like a like a like a pudding. I have it like it's like a pudding. I, I I've got to say I have way too much more than your daily recommended dose. However, vitamin C you can have copious amounts of vitamin C and it will not have any effect on you. Listen, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just telling you what I do. Yeah, there's certain things that you can have copious amounts of and it will kill you, hundred percent. Baba powder. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. So um, these are not my best numbers. I'm not trying to say these, these, these are great numbers. I'm just giving you the most recent. I mean, I went out for a ride today, but I haven't uploaded the, um, the footage from today. I haven't synced it to my, to my verb, to my Garmin um, to get the, the data off and stuff like that to see what number I was doing. But I was, do, I was going some today. So ideally, that's the video I should have put, put on there because um, I was doing some great numbers coming back into London from Richmond Park and oh, well I didn't really do too much too great on around Richmond Park we were quite chilled going around Richmond Park it's more of a leisurely ride it's only the stuff that I was doing on my own uh, going to Richmond Park or coming from Richmond Park that I kind of pushed myself a little bit more um, now uh, I try and eat alkaline vegan foods um, as best as I can. Every now and again, I'll falter. Um, in my household, somebody will make, I don't know, potato chips or um, roast potatoes and stuff like that. And I'm not very strict when it comes to plant plant based foods, where I'm like, I'm not eating that because it's not alkaline. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm human. I'm lazy. I can't be bothered to cook. And there's a portion of chips there. I'll eat it. Sweet potato fries. You know what I mean? Planting. I'll have it, you know, because those are foods I actually like. Um, animal products, hell no. So um, all the good stuff, I'll have it. I don't know what's happened. I think where I'm drinking my burdock and sarsaparilla it's anti mucus as well. My nose has started to run, so I sound like I've got a cold. But my nose has started to run. Um, all the mucus coming out of my system from drinking my um, burdock and sarsaparilla. Uh, so yeah, box seal doing okay numbers, going past people. Luckily, nobody went past me except for somebody in a car. Um, yeah, weather wasn't too great. If the weather was better, I think my numbers might have been a bit better, but uh, I enjoyed the day out. Um, never run out of energy. I did some great numbers when we're leaving Box Park and, and heading back into, into Richmond Park. Did some great numbers. I was trying to drop the boys and they kept up. I've got, I've got to give it to them. They actually kept up because I was trying to drop them the whole way. Um, and they were like, no, nope. they, they, they held my will. Don't get me wrong, there was, there was instances where we were going uphill and I was dropping man um, because, well, because I was dropping them, innit? <laughs> uh, I was cracking up. I was loving it. I was really, really trying. I was pushing. I was actually pushing myself because I was trying to drop them and I was like, hang on, if I'm doing these normal numbers, they're going to keep up. I need to push myself for them to not be able to keep up. So yeah, now I'm almost up to the top here um, and I'm gonna rejoin the boys. So from here, yeah, so what you eat, what you drink always makes a difference. So um, make sure you're eating good, clean carbs. I, I load up the day before. The day before my ride is when I eat a lot. Um, eat a lot of good carbs and I eat throughout the day. I eat great portions. On the morning of the ride, I don't really eat. I don't eat anything before I leave the house. I just have water, and then I get on my bike, and then I give it some because I know I've got the energy there. So here's sarsaparilla. Um, I love sarsaparilla. Here's burdock root, and here it is simmering on the pot. I'm, I'm about to put it in my in my teapot, and then um, yeah, I'll have a few cups um, in the evening just before bed and then I'll go to bed. And then one of the reasons why I have it before bed because my body's gonna start cleansing and cleaning while I sleep and healing. And to put stuff like this in your system just before you go to bed would be ideal for your body to help heal and cleanse and yeah, good stuff in and you get great results. This is it for me, thank you very much. If you like my video, hit the subscribe button, like button, share it, everything. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care, ciao for now. And here we go, there's a barbab.